so we're throwing together Fantasy Baseball League in one of the break groups that I'm in. And I've had some people ask me questions about, you know, how it works. Because most of the people have done fantasy football and are not familiar with fantasy baseball or even basketball. Some people have done that. But football is obviously the more popular version of fantasy sports. So I was just going to run down real quick uh, covering just a standard Yahoo fantasy. I mean, it could be any one of them, but just a standard rotisserie league for baseball. So most of it's set up with, you know, you get one catcher, one first baseman, one second baseman, one shortstop, one third baseman, and then it can be three outfielders and two utility or some leagues in the league that I'm currently setting up is left field, center field, right field. Now they can break it down, you know, more exclusively than that. Sometimes it's infield, like a middle infielder or corner infielder or stuff like that, but most standard leagues are going to be catcher, first base, second base, shortstop, third base, outfield, utility. And like I said, sometimes they will do, you know, break it down left field, center field, right field. You usually have anywhere from four to five bench spots, sometimes six, depending on the league. Again, as far as the pitchers go, you usually get two starting pitcher spots, four overall pitcher spots, which can be a starter or a reliever. And then you'll have uh, two relief pitcher spots. I believe that's how my league is set up. And it's usually about 1,400 innings. You get 162 games played at each position. And that's your standard league. Now, as far as the categories go, your categories are going to be standard-wise, runs, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, batting average uh, for the hitters. And then you're going to have wins, saves, strikeouts, ERA, and whip which is walks and hits per innings pitched is what whip is. People always kind of ask me that. So occasionally they'll mix in different categories and usually they try to do it. Most people that add stuff like I did add in this league, I added uh, hit by pitch because that's always kind of fun, fun and exciting. I remember back when I used to do fantasy baseball years ago and I've been doing it for probably 30 years now. When I was doing fantasy baseball years ago, I, I would always put hit by pitch in there or get in a league that had that. And Craig Biggio used to lead the league in those constantly. I mean, that man got plunked all the time. So it was always good to have Craig Biggio. Plus, I mean, he was a good player all around. You know, hit some home runs, steal some bases, very good batting average. But he would, I mean, he would destroy everybody. Fernando Vina, also for the Cardinals, used to get hit all the time too. So <clears throat> that was a, a very exciting one that, to get in our team also. It's, it's weird because they were both second basemen. Well, I mean, Biggio started as a catcher, but they were both second basemen. And now, you know, going through looking at the stats for last season, pretty much all the guys that led the league in getting hit were first basemen. So it's kind of it's kind of a little swap there from back when I was a kid. But that's that's a good category to add just because it's it's something interesting and it is something that you know you're going to have certain guys that lead the league every year, just like you do in any other category. Uh, and we also added uh, holds into this league because it, it gives the chance for a middle reliever. Normally, if you have a middle reliever on your team, you're hoping they catch a save somewhere along the way, or you're hoping that they, you know, steal a win, you know, or sneak out a win. So, adding that holds category gives you a little more where you got to stick a, 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 you know, a Darren O'Day type in there, you know, to keep your team afloat. So where it differs from football is it's not, although some leagues are set up like this, but most of the baseball leagues are set up as rotisserie leagues instead of head to head. So it's set up as a combination for the whole season. So you would have 162 games played at the end. If you led in a category, let's say you led in home runs, you would get, let's say you had a 10-team 10, 10, 10 league, you would get 10 points for leading in home runs. You would get one point for if you had the least amount of home runs. Same thing for all your categories. Most leagues, like I said, are going to have 10 categories. You got 10 teams. Then you're going to have you know 100 points as your maximum and 10 points as your minimum. So it's, it's something you have to keep an eye on every day because you're going to have players hurt. You're going to have guys that don't start all the time, you know, things like that. So you're going to have to keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And you, you have a cap on those teams on, on your, for 162 games, so you don't want to overplay your hand. And that happens a lot in fantasy if you, if you watch it as far as the rotisserie league goes. It happens a lot where a guy will end up running out of games because they put a first baseman in every day. Even when their first baseman was off, they put another guy in to fill that spot. And they end up week out, two weeks out, and they're out of games at first base. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on. 
that's all kind of getting into the the strategy part of it. Mainly I have people asking because we have a draft coming up. We're going to do it tonight, but I think I'm going to press, press it back one more day. And I'm going to try to get this video out so some of the guys in my group can watch it and maybe it'll help a little bit. But some of the questions I'm getting as far as the draft coming up and stuff like that is how do I set up my team? Like how do I, when the draft starts, what am I looking for? The key is either to go after players that are good all around in all the different categories, which is tough to find. You can find people that are average in some categories, but it's tough to find guys that steal a lot of bases, score a lot of runs, hit a lot of home runs, have a high batting average. They're few and far between. There's some of them out there, and you want to, if you can get those guys, you want to get them on your team. But what you want to look for is once you start getting down lower into the rounds, because usually in the first, second round, you can find kind of those guys that are well rounded on that. Same thing with pitching. You can find, you know, the pitchers that are going to get the wins, going to get the strikeouts, have a low ERA. There's enough in there that are going to be solid all around that are going to, that are going to keep you for the first two rounds, probably. After that, you either need to find guys that are average all around and stuff, or you need to find guys that may hit you 40 home runs but never steal you a base, and then the next round find a guy that may steal you 40 bases but may never hit you a home run. And you kind of got to mix and match it. The easiest thing to do when you're coming into the draft is sign up for your league, you get into the league, and you go into the players list on your league setup. You go in there, you hit players, and you look on there, and you can go down to different categories on there okay so we're going to take right here this is my yahoo fantasy league you're going to go down to the players part when you're searching for players and you're going to come down here and you're going to go on your players list like click on here on players right here you're going to come to the players list and it's got all the available players we haven't had our draft yet so everybody's available so you're going to come in here to stats this will show you you know where they were at last year you know what all their categories where they where they finish and you can select by category you know hit by pitch stolen base rbis batting average and then up in here you just go down to remaining games projected under your stats category you hit filter and it will show you what they're projected to do for this upcoming season hit by pitch is not on there but you kind of get the gist of it and that's for your batters your pitchers are right there and that's going to give you kind of an idea of who you want to draft. So you want to end up with guys, like I said before, if you want to have guys that they do overall stuff, you got, you know, Trey Turner hits a decent amount of home runs, steals a bunch of bases, drives in a few runs, scores some runs, hits 320. That's what he's projected. You know, you're just going to end up going after those, those, kind, of, those kind of players. But then eventually you're going to run out of that because you're going to start looking for home run guys and you're going to see, you know, Pete Alonzo led the majors in home runs, tied with Matt Olson, and together they stole five bases. So that's where you're going to kind of end up on that one. Um, so, you know, you may want to draft Pete Alonzo, but at the same time you're going to need to go out and find somebody like Miles Straw down here that stole 25 bases but only hit five home runs. So when you're doing your draft, you kind of want to set it up like that. And with your pitchers, you kind of want to be the same thing. My, my tip on pitchers is... You know, you want to get somebody that's going to win you a lot of games. You know, this is, again, still all projected. But at the same time, you also want to get pitchers that are high in strikeouts, and they may not necessarily be the leaders in wins. But if you can find a guy that gets a lot of strikeouts, gets a lot of wins, has a decent ERA, those are the kind of guys you want to chase after. Same thing when you get into saves and stuff in here. You want to look for the guys that not only get you a lot of saves, but at the same time strike out a lot of people. I know that was a little choppy and kind of all over the place because I was holding the camera, but you kind of get the gist of it. So when you're drafting your teams, you want to draft for the whole season. You want to have guys, you know, that are that are going to be there. So you want to do it like when you do when you do a football draft, for example. And I'm trying to correlate the two. When you do a football draft, like you want to have a quarterback for week nine when your quarterback's off, you know, something like that. So you generally want to carry something like at least two catchers. I wouldn't carry three, but you want to carry two catchers, preferably everyday catchers, because your most catchers, even Salvador Perez, only caught like 138 ball games last year. So you want to have, you're going to have to fill in 24 games at least where Perez is going to have the day off or um, it's just going to be an off day for his team and you're down a game or something because there's going to be games coming along throughout the season that's going to get rained out uh, that your player is going to get scratched at the last minute. 
things like that. So you need to, you don't necessarily have to constantly keep checking your team, but it doesn't hurt to check it at least one, once a week. Set up your lineup for that week. I check mine daily because you never know when people are going to get hurt or not be in the lineup that day. And you have to be able to make adjustments to move players in and out. Like if a pitcher goes on the injured injured list, you got to be able to move him down on the injured list, pick up a new pitcher, fill in that spot. You know, it's, it's a little different from football than that, that it, it can change daily. And you don't have that whole week to prepare sometimes. Or, you know, a few days because there's Thursday night games and Monday night games. But you know what I mean. So my, my tips on that is just be vigilant on your squads and keep an eye on on – there's other sections in there that I didn't highlight. And I mean, I can go back if you guys want a greater explanation, but there's other sections in there like your hot trends, your uh, transaction trends. So you can see when players are getting hot and you can see if they're a free agent or anything like that. It's all under that players tab right there. It's just like football. You know, it, it seems a little more cumbersome whenever you start looking at it, but it's really not. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just more of an everyday you have to kind of check. And it's good to know, you know, I know a lot of people buy sports cards and things like that, and that's mainly what this channel is directed at. But it's good to know that players are getting called up and you start seeing they're jumping up on the transaction trends or you start seeing that, you know, they're on the hot trends and you can see who's manned up on Sports Center that night. Or, you know, you can look on there and see some guy hit four home runs in the last seven days and you may want to start looking at his product or something like that. So having a fantasy baseball team does actually help for – you know, following players and following teams and stuff like that. And if you made it all the way through the video, I'm going to give you my little sneaky end of the season tip on this. And I try to do it every year is if you get to a point on the last day, most leagues are like this. ESPN leagues, leagues are like this. Yahoo leagues are like this. If you end up at the last day and let's say your league was set up for 1400 innings or even your utility spot was set up for 162 games, which would be what? 324. Uh, and so it's set up like that. If you get to the last day and let's say you've got 323 games at utility, you can play those two players because their scoring systems don't differentiate between which player played first or so. You can end up with an extra game sneaking it in like that on those spots that are multiple. Same thing with outfield. But with the pitcher spot, you can end up on the last day if you're at 1400 or if you're at 1399 innings, you can put as many pitchers in as you want and you can end up with an extra 100 innings on the last day of the season so sometimes if you're down on wins or if you're down on strikeouts and you're not at that maximum you can sneak in some guys down there at the end because those leagues don't differentiate between it doesn't cut off after your first inning it cuts off at the end of the day and i've had seasons where i ended up with like 14 1498 innings or something like that you know, because I was able to sneak in all starting pitchers that were may have been minor league guys or something like that that got caught up at the end of the year. But I was able to sneak in an extra 98 innings and it got me over the hump and strikeouts. And I actually ended up moving from third to second because of it. So there's a, that's just like a little sneaky thing at the end of the year. If you made it all the way through here, uh, you know, you can you can hang on to that tip. Don't ever use it against me because that's that's just not that's just not right to do. So, um I guess if you guys have any more questions, just go ahead and, and ask me on the comments or send me a message or something like that. And I will try to sneak in another video or I will try to answer them in the comment section. So I hope this helps some people and I hope that I get the rest of my league filled up and we can draft tomorrow. So thanks.